Hey everyone, this is Ben with Type Me. Today, during the 313, we're talking about a type of false continuous glucose reading called a compression low. During the 313, you're gonna get three topics, one suggestion in under three minutes. Remember to consult your physician and reference any links below before making any medical decisions. Let's go! <laughs> Number one, what is a compression low? Have you ever been sleeping peacefully in the middle of the night and then you're rudely awakened by your CGM honking like a freshly stolen Tesla? Chances are you might be experiencing a compression low. Now a compression low is a type of false CGM reading that occurs whenever a continuous glucose monitor is compressed against your body for a variable amount of time. Now this is an intermittent event and it depends on several factors like anatomical location of your CGM, your hydration, the amount of time you've been laying or on a compressed area area of your body and the hardness of your bed perhaps. Here's how it happens. Number two, physiology explained. To properly explain how the compression low occurs, we first need to revisit the anatomy. As you know, your CGM calculates your blood glucose sugar by reading a type of fluid in your body called an interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is created by or at the capillary beds, which is a thin space where your veins and your arteries meet. Here, about 15% of the fluid is leaked out of your circulatory system and is later collected by your lymphatic system. This extra fluid is called interstitial fluid, and it is what the CGM reads in order to calculate what your blood glucose level is. When the spot where your CGM is connected to your body is compressed, the readable interstitial fluid shifts and gives your CGM a false reading. A great way to illustrate this is by squeezing your fingertip. You'll notice before compressing your fingertip that it's pink in color and then afterwards shortly it's white and then it goes pink again. This color change happens because you've compressed or shifted your blood and interstitial fluid away from the tissue momentarily. That's how a compression low happens. When the interstitial fluid is compressed or pushed away from the tissue, the CGM reads falsely. Number three, tips to identify and avoid false lows. Now, after being rudely awakened from your slumber, the first and simplest way to identify a compression low is to look for the break in a pattern. As you know, CGMs work off of slopes that identify trends about 30 minutes ahead. Trends? Trends. So if you see a sudden break in the slope, just like in this picture, you might be onto something. The next clue would be to reference the time of your last bolus. For an example, if your last insulin bolus was about three hours prior to the event, you might have found the culprit. But if your last insulin bolus was six hours ago, then there should be no reason why you would have an acute drop in blood sugar without notice, unless your basal is off, that's a different video. And lastly, or firstly, depending on your preference, draw blood, not like that, just poke yourself. Compare the blood glucose reading to your CGM and calibrate if necessary. Suggestions, yes, I suggest you always be mindful of your CGM placement in order to avoid compression lows. Try to place that CGM at an anatomical location opposite to the side you sleep on. Unless you're a restless sleeper like me, thrashing about several times a night, then you might just be a werewolf. Either way, hopefully this video will help prevent you from eating all of your kids' Halloween candies. Or if you're a werewolf, just eating your kids. That would be bad, don't eat your kids. Uh, but join me next week when we talk about Garmin's new partnership with Dexcom and what that means for you. Peace.